I am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday, the 25th day of August, 2023. Yesterday, District Attorney Fonnie Willis said all 19 defendants charged with racketeering in Georgia have until next Friday to appear voluntarily in court in Fulton County rather than face arrest. One of those defendants, Mark Meadows, is already asking the court to move his case to federal court. Today, lawyers from Meadows filed that the case should be in a federal court because, quote, the conduct giving rise to the charges in the indictment all occurred during his tenure and as part of his service as chief of staff to Donald Trump. Meadows is the first of the 19 defendants charged in Georgia to file challenge to the case, but I think we can safely say he will not be the last. Anna Bauer is a correspondent for Lawfare who's been covering the Fulton County investigation. She watched it all unfold at the courthouse yesterday, and she joins me now. Um, Anna, first of all, I've been following your coverage. It's been super useful, so thank you for that. And uh, second of all, what do you make of the Meadows filing? Thanks for having me, Chris. Um, so I make of the Meadows filing that it is very much expected. We anticipated that many of these defendants would make their first move, um, a move to federal court. There is a statute that allows federal or, or federal officials or formal former federal officials to seek to remove state criminal cases to federal court. Um, many of them will likely seek to do that, whether because they want to delay proceedings or because they think they will have a friendlier jury pool there. Um, in terms of what I think about Meadows filing, you know, it, it's it's kind of something that I've talked to a lot of attorneys in Georgia about, and, and it's something that I've thought a lot about in terms of doing my own research. And I, I really think he actually does have a, a pretty good chance of removing the case to federal court. Um, you know, it's a very low standard. All that you have to really show is that you were a federal official who was doing something related to your federal duties. He kind of says that he was making phone calls as chief of staff and he was setting up meetings. Um, and, and I think that because it's a quite low standard, you just have to make a plausible claim. Uh, Meadows probably does have a pretty good chance of removing it to federal court. There seems to be some agreement amongst legal scholars and attorneys in Georgia that, that he will um, have a pretty good chance of it as well, especially considering that the 11th Circuit has interpreted the federal removal statute quite liberally. Yeah, let me read from his uh, the filing uh, of his lawyer saying, nothing Mr. Meadows is alleged in the indictment to have done is criminal per se, arranging Oval Office meetings, contacting state officials on the president's behalf, visiting a state government building, setting up a phone call for the president. One would expect a chief of staff to the president of the United States to do these sorts of things. So to your point, they're making the argument this was done in his line with federal duties, although we should note that the allegation in the RICO uh, charges is that one of the things he did was illegal, per se, which is the solicitation of the this um, violation of an oath of a public officer that's um, that says that that Donald J. Trump and Mark Randall Meadows with the offense of are charged with solicitation of violation of oath by a public officer in that call with Brad Raffensperger. Should it be removed to federal court, though? And here's where I get a little wonky on the law. It still gets tried under Georgia law, right? It's not the 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 the, the, the sort of venue of jurisprudence changes, but the jurisdiction, the state laws, all the stuff that is the undergirding law is still Georgia state law. That is correct. It still is Georgia state law charges. Uh, Fonnie Willis and her team will still prosecute the case. The only difference is that they will prosecute the case a few blocks down the road at the federal courthouse in the Northern District of Georgia in federal court. Um, federal procedural rules will largely apply, and a federal judge will preside over the case. The, the defendants who are able to remove will also have a federal jury pool. So that's the difference. Difference, but it, it, it doesn't mean that the charges are any different or that the prosecutorial team is any different. It, it won't be federal prosecutors. It will still be state prosecutors. And importantly, uh, Trump or any other uh, future president will still not be able to pardon Trump under uh, a federal pardon because, again, these are still state charges right. if he is convicted or if others are convicted. 
That's a really key point. I want to just reiterate that. Should Meadows be convicted even after a successful removal of federal court, it's still a Georgia offense. It still can't be pardoned by whichever president uh, will, come, will come later. Anna Bauer, who's been doing fantastic work covering this for Lawfare, thanks so much for joining us.